welcome to Furious Driving. And you may remember a few months ago, we spent a few months following the progress of a very famous TV car. Yes, the Minder Capri, Terry. But the, Terry wasn't the only famous Capri during the 1980s. There was another one. It was the Pratmobile from Only Fools and Horses. However, the owner of this car has got an interesting collection, not just one TV car, but five. Well, there's only four here right now. He's also got the Reliant Robin, but it's in the Gaydon Heritage Motor Museum at the moment, and we're not there, so it isn't here. But we've got these ones. Let me talk you through what's here. So we have Only Fools and Horses, Del Boy's Capri Gear, the Pratmobile. Then we have Gavin and Stacey, Gavin's Citroen Saxo VTS. Then to my left, we have some mothers do have them, Frank Spencer's Morris Minor. And finally, car share, Peter Kay's character's Fiat 500L. It's enormous, isn't it, when you look at the thing? It looks like a spawn camera. Now, first of all, here we have Del Boy's Capri from Only Fools and Horses, the Pratmobile. It's the most unpleasant Ford Capri you have ever seen in your life. Now, this had an interesting history in the TV show. First of all, they put the car in for one episode only, and they found an absolute rock box of a car. It was absolutely hanging, it's old Mark II. Uh, the most disgusting color they could find to paint it, dressed it with the uh, interior, which you don't want to touch, all the lights, all the accessories, you know, it's horrible. The car was really well received, it was very Successful, but the car wasn't going to last. They need reliable cars for filming so you can repeat scenes over and over again. So they went and found a Mark III, dressed it, painted it with all the bits taken off the Mark II, which was then scrapped. Which, and, but of course, a different number plate. So for most episodes, they took the number plate from the previous car, screwed it on in the same place. This has actually got screw holes in the same place on this number plate as it has on this number plate, so they're transferable. So you always see this car, CCR412W, wearing UYD 177R number plates, apart from one episode when they forgot. This was Uncle Albert's funeral, when that car has got the roof rack removed, black ribbons on the bonnet, and those number plates. It's the only time the car is shown dressed up incorrectly. This thing is dressed up with every accessory you could possibly not want on a car. We've got six spotlights on the front of the car, combined with the Ford's original four. There's 10 lamps on the front of this thing. Of course, it's all bent and buckled and knocked and a bit rusty, which is exactly how it was. The paint is just horrific. And being TV paint, it's not that good. And if we look closely, you'll see we've got different trim on the driver's side and the passenger side. We are missing this bit of rubber trim on this side, but you can also see where it was a different model before and it's been painted over the decals. So the props department have done a brilliant job of creating a car which perfectly reflects Del Boy's inimitable style. Here on the door, we've got the uh, gold monogram DT for Del Trotter, or Derek Trotter, sorry. Um, we've got the non-body color wing mirrors on both sides. We've got the aerodynamic, maybe, windscreen wipers. We've got the red aerial on the passenger wing. Roof rack, obviously, because practical. And on the back, we've got plenty more. We've got two more bright red aerials, because obviously bright red, bright red wiper, lovely and the big capri logo because it's very very tasteful in 1980s and naturally because del boy is del boy we've got the turbo sticker it's not a turbo and uh, these things these lightning conductors which have disappeared from our roads somehow and there's a point in the early 80s when every car had an anti-static lightning conductor where have they all gone Honestly, I don't know where to begin talking about the interior of this car. This is a special kind of something and I don't even know what that something is. The tiger skin car seats are very, very dull. If it was just limited to car tiger skin car seats, you could kind of let it go. But look, we've got tiger skin door cards, tiger skin armrests, tiger skin gear knob, tiger fur center console, tiger fur dashboard. It's even around the steering column. It's everywhere. The rear door cards. It's it's too much. I'm into this car, and obviously you've got the tasteful uh, steering wheel cover. There were two other steering wheel covers that come with the car in different levels of fur. Ow. The door card is quite phenomenal. You can see how it had got fairly ordinary blue door cards before, but then this fur faux fur obviously I do obviously don't think I probably need to tell you it's not real tiger fur uh, is quite the thing and move on to the dashboard this is just a sensory overload it really is 
it's just literally everywhere. Obviously, I've got to do the furry dice as well. There were other, some episodes where they used a white and orange combination, but the red ones were also used quite a lot. I believe this is where the actual furry dice has used in the show. <laughs> the furry glove box is quite spectacular. I'm particularly fond of how they've managed to go all around all of the instruments. And this was only a very low mileage car. It's got 54,000 miles on it still. It hasn't really been used much in the last few years. Standard Capri layout, of course. It's just an ordinary Capri underneath. Then we've got these uh, interesting center console areas. Uh, you see the brown ordinariness underneath, which might have been quite a nice car, really. Now this is very interesting indeed. There's a hidden button down here for the lever. Aha! This is not James Bond spec, although it is stuff coming out the back of the car. Because the car is being used for TV filming, it has to be reliable. You have to count on it to go time after time, take after take, and be a good running reliable car. But because it's Del Boy's car, it has to be looking like an absolute rotter on screen, chucking out smoke, backfiring, all that kind of stuff. And these, although they don't seem to go anywhere anymore, were the buttons to control this. One of these made to the smoke, one of them caused it to backfire apparently. Uh, would believe that there was something injected into the carburetor when you push the button. And so it would cause like a big cloud of smoke to come out the back and make the car run rough for a second. Although the owner has got no instructions and can't quite trace the wiring, so he hasn't dared to push it just yet in case it does something awful. And this car really is like sensory overload. When you're sitting in it, it's just so in your face. I mean, it is disgusting, but at the same time, it's sort of iconic in a way. So this car actually looks like a terrible ropey old bucket of bolts, but in fact it's a really good car. It starts on the button every time. Uh, it's just been dressed up by the props department to make it look like the worst car you've ever seen. You're gonna get some kind of hideous illness from just being close to, but in fact, it's, it's quite, quite all right. And it's quite amazing to think you're sitting in a chair that David Jason's been sitting in as well. Derek and Rodney have ridden in this car which is yeah, touching, touching fame, touching celebrity, touching stardom. Well, it's, it's quite amazing, even if it is absolutely disgusting. Right, let's go look at the next one. Now these were all incredibly popular TV shows, both at the time and still on repeat. And Gavin and Stacey is a monster of a show, but this car though is the one that's had the least done to it to make it into a TV car. In fact, it's had nothing done to make it into a TV car. It is just an ordinary Citroen Saxo VTS. It's the kind of car that Essex boy Gavin would have driven back at the time. The only thing to really tell that it has been on TV is the fact it is covered in little dents all over the bodywork where cameras were suckered onto it and big TV cameras as well at the time. So the bonnet is actually quite rippled. So inside, this is an ordinary X plate. What's that, year 2000, 1999 perhaps even. Citroen Saxo, so the standard velouri seats, the standard dashboard, the weird pull-out air vent. I've not, I've not reviewed one of these yet, but I did own one very briefly. Not a VTS, it was a real boggo thing. So yeah, it's a nice little car. So the story of Gavin and Stacey was Essex boy Gavin from Billericay meets... Uh, et so the story of Gavin and Stacey, in case you live under a rock and haven't seen it, Essex boy Gavin from Billericay meets Stacey from Barry Island on a night out and then they fall in love. He's then driving from Essex to Wales and back again, sometimes on his own, sometimes with her, staying in Wales, staying in Essex. And this car is up and down the motorway all the time. The show was written by James Corden, who is now of course an international megastar, Ruth Jones, who is now of course an international megastar, and starred as Gavin and Stacey, Matthew Horne and Joanna Page. And they sat in these seats, Matthew Horne here, Joanna Page there, and of course, James Corden and Ruth Jones were here as well. Smithy, of course, had the big Volvo estate done up in his uh, decorating business with the ladders and the pipes and so on, on the roof, which is a shame. I think, I think that car has been scrapped, sadly. That would be a cool car to get, but it's interesting how little has been done to this car, apart from all the sucker damage on the front and the sides where the cameras were attached to it and the car was then belted up and down the road. Look at this, all of the velour. We love the velour. So it still has the flippy out air vent. Airbag can be turned off. Original radio still. And of course it's fairly basic being a turn of the millennium car, no air conditioning, just basic blowers and heater. But it's a little bit sporty, we've got the chrome top gear knob, I don't know if all models got this or just the VTS. We've got electric windows and of course we've got the white dials because sporty. 
Now we're going back further in time to Some Mothers Do Have Them, which ran for two seasons. I thought it was longer than that, but only two seasons between 1973 and 1975. Again, perfect characterization for Frank Spencer, played by Michael Crawford, of course. The Morris Minor, it's a fantastic car. It's a cult classic. These days it's retro and cool and young people are not ashamed. In fact, they're very proud to be seen driving one of these things because they're awesome. By the early 70s though, they were a little bit long in the tooth and it was the kind of thing your granny drove. So Frank Spencer, who's doddering, daft, silly, inept, it was the ideal slow, pondering, old-fashioned car. It was the ideal car for him in his uh, woolen tank top. The show was filled with very, very practical, dangerous stunts. Health and safety was not a thing in the 1970s. So there were a couple of changes made to the car. This door doesn't really open that well. It's not perfect for me because during filming, with Michael Crawford in the driver's seat, his co-star Michel Dutrice in the passenger seat, this door was actually removed so a camera could be slung out here on a scaffold cradle, being in the 1970s, cameras were big, and film them driving the car. This trafficator is actually still broken from that period. Now around the back of the car, We've got a nice sturdy rear bumper. In fact, a very sturdy rear bumper because there's a length of scaffold pole bent into the back of it. Now I say, the stunts on this show were ridiculously dangerous. There was an episode when they were sat on the top of the car while the car was driving. Insanely dangerous, no wires, no safety, just could have fallen off and died at any time. There was also an incredibly famous scene where the car was hanging over a cliff and Michael Crawford, Frank Spencer, was hanging from the bumper. So the bumper was strengthened with this metal bar in the back of it so it would take his weight. However, it still only held on with a bolt through the bar and the bumper and a bolt into the chassis here. I believe he was on a wire for that one because he was over a cliff and the car was balanced on a couple of uh, railway sleepers to allow it to tip back and forth with a couple of stagehands lifting the car up and down to make it cantilever and bounce. The 1970s was a very different place. Now inside the car it's a standard four-door Morris Minor saloon. We've got our body colour dashboard and door tops the smell of the vinyl and the stuffing in the seats. It's so nostalgic and so, well, I guess, 1960s and 50s Britain, really. This is another low mileage car, though. It's only got 48 and a half thousand miles on the clock. Again, TV cars don't go very far because they're used for filming back and forth and put in storage between seasons and then often kept on cold storage just in case for a long time afterwards. Now, you might notice this car is lighter blue than you may remember it from seeing it on TV. That's because in 2016, it was used in comic relief and given a quick blow over in this light blue color. There are some chips on this door where you can see the original grey paint showing through. Here's the tax disc from the year the show started airing. You can easily spot a paint job that's been done for TV because not a lot of care has been taken. Now I'll climb in. Oh, it is a typical Morris Minor. Very hard to get your feet past the door shut. Tiny little controls, little tiny pedals, mini style um, speedo over in the centre of the dashboard and the huge steering wheel. These cars are actually enormous fun to drive. I must buy one one day. Again, it's strange thinking you're sat where millions of people, literally millions of people, have watched this car and been on its journey together. And here I am today in a field, sitting in it. <laughs> it's quite crazy. One more to look at though, bang up to date time. So now we're bang up to date with the most recent show here, Peter Kay's Car Share, which ran from 2015 to 2018. And this Fiat 500L, for blooming huge, probably, was the star of the show and also the set of the show. The entire show virtually was filmed inside this car. So very unusually, every scene was filmed with cameras mounted in the front or mounted in the back and this car was everything. There are some interesting features which make it very recognizable from the show. So the, Peter Kay was the star of the show. He played John Redmond, and I, I don't think I ever knew his name was Redmond until a minute ago when I Googled it. It was an average man doing an average job. He was an assistant manager of a supermarket, so he drove an average car. And he would collect co-worker Keeley on the way to work to car share into the supermarket. There's a couple of things which the car picked up along the way. In one episode, he backed into something and scuffed up the back bumper. That's still here. It's also a couple of marks on this wheel as well. You think a Fiat 500 is small, but the L is absolutely massive. Now, something I noticed a lot when I was watching the TV show is how this rear screen was always dirty, which is great because it, for continuity purposes, you couldn't really see through it too clearly, so you could go from cut to cut to cut, and it always looked vaguely the same. I wondered how they kept that window so dirty all the time. It's not actually dirt, 
it's a vinyl print of a dirty windscreen that the wiper has gone over. This is genius. This is TV genius and TV magic at its finest. This is genuine TV memorabilia stuck on the back window here. Now, like the other TV cars, this is very low mileage, but this one's even lower. It's 3,700 miles from new because the car was bought brand new by the production company and then used for the TV production, held on to for a short time afterwards for in case of special editions, and now sold off into this private collection of TV cars. So the car is as it left the last episode of the TV show and pretty much never driven anywhere. Now, something I never really noticed about him driving, or they never do to the gear shift, this is a weird semi-automatic gear shift thing, which I've done zero research on because I didn't know it was here. The owner did say it was a strange gearbox, and I thought, what does he mean? Here we go, it's an auto manual, plus minus neutral reverse. It's an odd thing, but it makes sense for it to be an auto if you've got the driver doing pieces to camera and acting. You do want the minimum having to think about driving as possible, which is what automatics are all about, really, isn't it? Now, something else which you may spot, so these seats have got some kind of embossed writing, some kind of calligraphy. I think it says, live, love, laugh, or something. I can't even read it. More colour... That doesn't make any sense. More can speak colour to the heart different in a thousand... I don't know. It's some motivational nonsense, but it was covered up with seat covers during the show. I've never sat in one of these things before. Doing so doesn't make me want to do it again, I'll be honest. This is average car for average man who doesn't really care about cars or driving, just wants a vehicle that's on a good PCP scheme as far as I can tell. So middle manager, middle age, middle interest would have been perfect for this car. And Keely, played by Sean Gibson, was non-plussed and non-interested, but it was a comfortable, nice car to be in, so she was happy. All perfect characterizations of the cars. Well done, props department. Now, one episode, there was an incident with the door. Kaylee jumped out of the car, Peter Kay jumped out as well. He opened his door and a truck took it clean off. That was this door here, nicely mangled by the truck, bent all over, and of course, it's signed by all the cast and crew. I say cast and crew, there's only two in the cast really for the most of it. Sean Gibson just here, lots of love, Sean Gibson. And very best wishes and many thanks for your help with the car share, Peter Kay. And of course, picture the two actors in the center here. And this is the rest of the, uh, the crew signed it as well. And there's more TV trickery going on here because a truck isn't gonna clean, swipe a car door off the side of your motor. This one was rigged. This was rigged. They've set the hinges up to cleanly break away and stage the shot they want. You can see the damage in here isn't consistent with it being torn off the side of the car. It's nice and smooth and flat. It's dented here, scratched up in, obviously scratched there as well. But where the hinge is bolted on or the door check strap would have been bolted on, it's still nice and clean metal. So, there you have it, one of the most interesting and eclectic car collections I've come across, really. So if you looked at these four cars as a collection on their own, well, five technically if you include the Reliance, although that's not here right now, then it would be a very strange and unusual collection and it wouldn't make a lot of sense. But knowing the link that all four of these cars are international megastars, suddenly it all becomes clear. These cars together must have been seen by a hundred million people or some other massive number. I'm making this up as I go along. But isn't it incredible to be able to sit in the presence of stardom's cars? Peter Kay and his Fiat, Michael Crawford and his Morris, Matthew Horne, Joanna Page, Ruth Jones, and of course, James Corden and the Saxo. And of course, David Jason and Nicholas Lindhurst Capri. Fantastic. I've loved pouring over these cars and just sitting in them and I hope you've enjoyed watching it as well. If you have, as usual, please do hit like and subscribe and smash that bell notification button down the bottom on the right hand side of your screen. And I'll see you again next time and I've literally no idea what I'm doing next. Take care everyone. Thank you.